Good morning. morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We're delighted that you're here. Visitors are always welcome, and we're doubly pleased if you're visiting with us today. And we hope you will find the attendance pad that's on your row in the hymnal rack and register your presence, whether a member or a visitor, and pass it down the pew so that all of our worshipers can do that. And if you see someone come in late, please pass this to them and make sure they sign as well. And for you who are joining our church today, please find one of the How to Join cards there in the hymnal rack and come to the front and let us welcome you into the membership of the First United Methodist Church. You will find in your bulletin today an announcement sheet about the things that will be happening in the days ahead places of service and opportunities for worship. We hope you'll take that insert home with you and have it uh, at your place. And if you have not signed up to have your picture in the pictorial directory, there are people just beyond this door at the visitor center. Please drop by there and make a date for your pictorial setting. Now, if I have a bulletin here, and I do not. Let me borrow your bulletin. <laughs> Would you stand and greet each other and welcome each other to this service of worship? invited to participate in the morning worship service of First United Methodist Church in downtown Fort Worth, Texas. Tim Brewster, Senior Pastor of First United Methodist Church of Fort Worth. Welcome to this service of worship. I'm glad you've chosen to join us in this broadcast of our 11 o'clock worship service. And I hope you can join us in person at one of our services at 8.30 in the chapel, 9.30 in the sanctuary, 11 o'clock in the sanctuary, and at 11.11 in Wesley Hall. On behalf of the whole congregation of First United Methodist Church, I welcome you. printed in your bulletin. God of life, you call us to life abundant, not in abundance of accolades or accomplishments or accumulation, but in abundance of joy and purpose in our living. 
we understand that too often we have invested our time, our resources, our passions on things that do not bring life to us or to others. Let us hear your call to choose life, gracious God, that this world might be blessed. Amen. We have the joy of sharing together in the sacrament of holy baptism this morning, so we ask our families to please come forward at this time. Baptism is assigned to us of the mercy and the grace of God. It is a sacrament, one of the sacraments of the church that we honor. 
He indicated that we do not come into the relationship with God we have on the basis of anything that we do or anything that we are, only upon God's gracious gift unto us. Infant baptism is especially appropriate as a demonstration of God's grace. Remember how Jesus said, let the children come unto me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the very kingdom of God. And I ask you now as you stand before God in this congregation, do you affirm your faith in Christ? And do you promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations, and all races? And will you nurture Reed David and Georgia Barrett in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? Georgia Barrett, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Oh, that water's cold. Okay. Y'all place your hands on her. Yes, you can too. Place your hands on, on her, Julia. Yeah. Georgia Barrett, the Holy Spirit work within you. That being born of water and the Spirit, you'll remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There you go. Read, David, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now, if y'all place your hands on him. Read, David, the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you will remain a faithful disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Here we go. Yeah, I'll give it a shot. <laughs> She's slippery. Okay, we disconnected there. Okay. She's warming up her voice to be a preacher like her mother, I think. What a blessing it is to I participate in this holy sacrament so that we pledge uh, ourselves along with their parents to nurture these children in the faith so that as they grow up among us they will come to know the love and the grace of God and someday they'll stand at this or some other altar and make their own profession of faith in Christ and all this is God's wonderful gift offered to us without Christ. Please join me as we continue to affirm our faith together with them. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that George Barrett and Reed David, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. like to invite the children to come down to our usual spot for our time together and while the kids are coming down this is the second week in a row I've made an announcement to the grown-ups I'm not as good at talking to grown-ups as you probably noticed by now but I'm gonna risk it one more time right after this service if you're available to do so if you will very quickly and safely move your cars out of the Justin lot 
because we are getting ready for our big Halloween carnival, which is from three to five. So make sure you look behind you when you're backing out and then do so very carefully. And I know all the kiddos are excited to be at the fall carnival today from three to five. You are welcome to come too. It's not just for kids. We're gonna have hot dogs. So come join us for that. And kids come down if you haven't come down already. All right, we got some from the balcony bunch. Everybody taking a big, deep breath. <sighs> okay, repeat after me. Listen carefully. <clears throat> Today, we're going to explore blessings. And this whole week, I had on my blessing goggles so I could look around and see all of the blessings around me and all the ways that I could be a blessing. And I need you to do that too right now. Put on your blessing goggles. And I need you to help me do some of these. As I say them, I want you to help me do what we're saying, okay? Here we go. Blowing out candles on your birthday cake is a blessing. <gasps> Calling your grandmother on her birthday is a blessing. Pick up the phone and call your grandmother. Call your nana. Catching snowflakes on your tongue. And uh, that's it. Shoveling the snow on your neighbor's sidewalk is a blessing. A friend who makes you laugh is a blessing. Ha ha! That didn't sound at all canned. Being there when your friend needs to cry is a blessing. A puppy wagging its tail is a blessing. Let's see those puppy dog tails. All right? Yeah, not, that's what, some of y'all have pugs, some of you have border collies, right? Holding the puppy in your lap when it thunders outside and scratching its ears is a blessing. Rain is a blessing. Sharing your umbrella when it rains is a blessing. Warm socks. Put on your nice toasty socks on a cold day are a blessing. Donating clothes for the church's clothing drive is a blessing. Mom's homemade apple crisp is a blessing. Offering to do the dishes afterward is a blessing, particularly to mom. Hearing a bedtime story, can you hear that? Hearing a bedtime story is a blessing. Telling your little brother a bedtime story and leaving out the scary parts is a blessing. A good night's sleep. <gasps> Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. A good night's sleep is a blessing. Being quiet shh, when you're the first one in the house to wake up is a blessing. Life is a blessing. You are a blessing. A deep breath is a blessing. And prayer is a blessing. Dear God, thank you for all of your many blessings. And thank you for blessing us with the power to share our blessings with others and to be a blessing to others. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day. Affirmation is found printed in your bulletin. Let us now stand as together we affirm our faith. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father.
God. From the beginning of time, you created and blessed your world. You chose Abraham and Sarah and other men and women to be blessed and then become a blessing to all the nations in the world. You sent us Jesus as a miraculous incarnation of yourself so that we might be blessed by your grace anew and understanding of your very nature. You continually bestow blessing upon blessing upon us and your world every day, often spontaneously. And today we pause to say thank you from the very depths of our hearts and our beings. Your gifts to us are immeasurable, the food and the water and the shelter that sustain us. The basic gifts of life you give us every day, our families, our friends, those who provide us with an education, our, those whom we care about and who care about us this day, our churches and our places of worship. And today we thank you for the freedoms we have to speak freely and explore each of our God-given rights and pathways in life. Lord, you are so generously and you continuously love us and accept us and bless us and forgive us and renew and transform us. And you bless us this day, calling us to turn and become a blessing to others, to partner with you and others in our congregation and others in our neighborhoods to share blessings and gifts with others around us with the opportunities you give us every day to help create a more just and compassionate world also for you and others who do not enjoy the very basics of food and shelter themselves. Lord, bless the people today of the Middle East as they struggle in their own search for a new day, in Libya, in Egypt, in Iraq, and Afghanistan, as they seek a new pathway and direction for their countries. And bless and protect our troops this day and all those involved in wars and in harm's way through the policies and decisions of nations and leaders. Bless us this day, Lord, and grant us the open hearts and minds to accept the blessings you give us, to be grateful especially for our children, for their parents, for the songs they share with us from their hearts, the Halloween carnivals they enjoy, the many ways that they minister to us and we share with them as well. Lord, make us a blessing this day to everyone that we meet throughout your love that walks with us and opens up those opportunities to share. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of Christ. The first 11 chapters of Genesis are called the prehistory, begins with the creation of the world, and ends with the Tower of Babel. The narrative beginning of Israel's history is the 12th chapter of Genesis, and it is the call of Abraham. Now the Lord said to Abram, go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you, and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you, I will curse. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took his wife, Sari, 
and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran, and they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. God speaks to us through the reading of scripture. Thanks be to God. Out of the hymnal, hymn 119, O God in Heaven. Likely it's not a very familiar hymn to you. Uh, it comes to us from the church in Asia, which is actually a, a blossoming um, group of people. Um, we don't have very many hymns in our hymnal that are uh, of the Asian persuasion, and this one actually doesn't even sound like it comes from there. It almost sounds like it might come from Latin America. It's this very sweet lullaby sort of um, hymn. Um, but because it's new and different, I thought maybe I would sing it and the choir will sing with me one time through the first verse and then hopefully you feel comfortable enough that you'll sing with us on verses 1, 2, and 3 after that. seated. It's good to see all of you this morning as we continue the uh, series of sermons on the four leading causes of life. Uh, as I've said before, I take the title from the book Leading Causes of Life by Lawrence M. Prey. Um, in that book, he reminds us that if we focus on all those lists of the leading causes of death, which we see all the time, then our focus becomes on avoiding that which leads to death rather than uh, focusing on that which really leads to life, enhances life, uh, builds up life, uh, generates life, the leading causes of life. Now we have talked about connection and action the last two Sundays. We had Paul's uh, wonderful image of the church, uh, the followers of Jesus, as the body of Christ. And uh, that is a real image of connection. There are many members of the body. Those members differ, but they all come together and are connected together and become the body of Christ, um, carrying on the ministry of Christ in the world today, which is also an action image. James reminds us, as we saw last week, that faith without action is dead. 
So action is a leading cause of life. And the body of Christ is an image of being alive and in action. Uh, and today, uh, the image uh, of the body of Christ fits as well uh, as we think about the third leading cause of life, blessing. Blessing. Because it is the hands and the feet that we possess collectively as the body of Christ and individually. It is the heart and the mouth and the ears with which we use to bless people today. And so blessing is a leading cause of life. Our text for today comes from, as Bill said, the very beginning of Israel's history. It's right after the prehistory section in the, in the Torah, and then you have the beginning of the history, which begins with the call of a couple named Abram and Sarai uh, to follow the instruction of God, that is to pick up from their homeland and to go to a strange land that they will inherit called Canaan. And uh, God says to them, I will bless you uh, and you will be a blessing. In fact, you will be a blessing to all the families of the earth. So we learn at the very beginning of the history section of the Hebrew Scriptures that the people of God are not only blessed, but are called to, to be a blessing. They are blessed in order to be a blessing. And so they begin this journey. And journey is always an image for the Christian life. It's always an image for the life of faith, that we are on this journey. And, and you listen to the language that we use, and it's journey language. Um, where's our life headed? Are we following Jesus? Are we going in the direction God intends for us to go? Those are all journey images that we use. So we talk about the life of faith as a journey, and all along the way there is the promise I will bless you. And all along the way, there is the expectation that we will bless others. Blessing is a leading cause of life. When I think about the image of the journey, I, I can't help but think about a, a program that I saw probably 20 years ago about blind uh, slalom skiers. Uh, that I'm sure now there's technology that enables this, but at least at that time, there would be a, a skier that would ski along beside them, and they would give the instructions. They would talk about the directions. So they would say, this is coming up. Uh, prepare to turn left. Turn left now, um, and, and so forth. And they were able to ski a slalom course uh, because they were listening and pay atten paying attention to that voice guiding them, and, that, uh, and they were closely following in, in that path. That's a great image for the faith journey, I think. We can't see what's up ahead of us. As Paul says, perhaps we can see in a mirror dimly or a glass darkly, if you go to the King James Version of that, but uh, we really can't see what lies ahead. And so we listen for the still, small voice and we seek to follow in the footsteps of, of Jesus. And in that way, we travel the journey that is ours to travel. And all along the way is blessing and the expectation, the call on our lives that we will bless others. I want us to think about three aspects of blessing. Um, and the first of those is original blessing. Original blessing. Perhaps you've heard that term before. Too often, though, we talk about original sin. Original sin. As though that's who we were created to be, and that's who we were from the beginning, and, and that's who we are at in, in essence. But we go back to the book of Genesis, and we find that when God created the world, God said, it's very good. It's, it's good. And when God created humanity, God said, it's very good. Originally, there is this blessing where God says, this is very good. Let us make man and woman in our own image, God says. And, and it's very good. So original blessing, that's who God created us to be. Blessed people, blessed by the love of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, 
continually poured out on us that we see and experience supremely in Jesus Christ. Original blessing. In the sacrament of baptism, what are we saying to the child? Now the child doesn't understand the words that we say, but the parents do. The family does. We as a community of faith do. And we will help that child understand who the child is and who the child can become. That's blessing. And in that original blessing is the reminder, you are a precious child of God. God's grace is poured out on you. Even though you can't earn it, you don't know about it, God's grace is poured out on you. That is original blessing. And we say to that child, little brother, little sister, God will take you in places we can't imagine. God will use you in ways we do not know. Your journey will take you in places we can't begin to imagine or comprehend. But wherever that journey goes, God will be with you, and you are blessed all along the way. And we will teach those children, you are blessed also to be a blessing. So I really want us to celebrate that original blessing. But I also want to celebrate blessing received, received blessing. Blessing comes our way often in ways we do not expect, which makes the blessing all the sweeter. I think about uh, the story of Jacob and Esau. You remember the story, these twin boys? Esau's born first, Jacob's second. Um, and uh, Jacob tricks uh, his father into giving the birthright and the blessing, a blessing that can't be taken back. Words are that powerful. Uh, giving it to him instead of to his brother Esau. He was first born, and in the tradition, it was his. But Jacob stole it, and Esau vowed the next time he saw him, he would kill him. And so Jacob left, and many years later, they meet up again. Jacob knows the meeting will happen the next morning, and so he goes off to himself uh, to wrestle with God. And he wrestles with God all night, and he demands a blessing from God. And he grabs on to God until finally God gives the blessing. And in giving the blessing, he also touches him on the hip and he limps for the rest of his life. This sort of constant reminder that he has wrestled with God. In fact, he gets a new name. It's not Jacob anymore. He's known as Israel, the one who wrestles with God. And he knows that this meeting is coming the next day. And he has this blessing from God, but he's still terrified. He's been wrestling with the scoundrel that he has been, uh, wrestling with God, and now he knows that he's going to meet his brother. When the brother sees him, he runs. Esau runs, and he embraces now Israel, Jacob. He embraces him. And Israel says to his brother, your face, seeing your face is like seeing the face of God with such graciousness you have welcomed me. And it is a beautiful moment of blessing. And it is an unexpected moment of blessing. What everyone expects is revenge and some sort of justice uh, for what Jacob has done. But instead, there is this blessing received. What a difference that makes. Larry Prey, in the book that uh, 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 The Leading Causes of Life, he tells the story of a father and son who are gradually growing apart. The son is a teenager, and the father uh, acts like he can't do, the, the son can't do anything right, and the father does everything right, and, and that has created a lot of friction, and they've grown apart. And they decide to go uh, on a sailing trip, and both of them have in mind uh, without a doubt, that somehow this trip together will make things better. It will, it will somehow bridge the gap that has developed between them. And so they go on the trip, and a storm comes up. And uh, the sail swings around, and the father's not paying attention. It hits him in the head and knocks him out. And so the son has to take control of the boat and to sail it into safe harbor by himself. 
And it ends up being a blessing, a surprise blessing. Because the father who could do nothing wrong was not paying attention and got himself knocked out. And the son who seemingly could do nothing right took control and saved their lives and took them into safe harbor on his own. And each learned something important about the other. And both received a blessing. Blessings received are precious. I think about uh, my pastor, D.L. Dykes, Jr. I think about him a lot, uh, as you know. I've talked about him several times. And because of the youth group reunion we had uh, a little over a week ago, uh, I particularly had him on my mind. I think about his blessing in my life. When I went to see him struggling with my own faith in the direction of my life at the age of 15, um, D.L. looked at me and he said, in the midst of that conversation, Tim, is God calling you into ordained ministry? Remarkable that he asked that question. But it was more than a question. It was a blessing. And he blessed me in many other ways in the months and the years that would come. But that initial blessing made all the difference in the world in my life. It was a cause of life for me in a way that I can hardly describe to you and has led to so many blessings in my life. Are there people like that in your life? I know there are. How about family members, close friends who bless you all the time? My wife Susan daily blesses me. And my children and our grandchildren bless our lives. Isn't that true for you? Aren't there people from whom you receive blessings? And it is a cause of life, a leading cause of life. Blessing. And then I want us to think about intentional blessing, or we might say blessings given. But it's, it's intentional blessing. The intentional giving of blessing. See, there are two parts to that promise to Abraham and Sarah. Uh, one is, I will bless you all along the journey. The second part is, you will be a blessing. In fact, you'll be a blessing to every family on earth. That's what the people of God do. We bless. We're blessed to be a blessing. Uh, Newbegin uh, says that... Um, one of the greatest heresies in the church is to separate those two and to pay attention only to the first part of that, that we're blessed, and to bask in the blessing, to celebrate the blessing, to sing about the blessing that we receive, but to neglect the second part, and you will be a blessing to everyone, not just to a few, but to everybody, your job as people of God and my job as a person of God is to be a blessing, to bless. And it makes all the difference in the world, especially when it is done intentionally, when we bless intentionally. I think about uh, the story of uh, David uh, Livingstone, who as a very young man, wanted to be a missionary and wanted to be a great preacher, and he climbed into the pulpit one evening in Scotland to preach his first sermon. He had worked on it, prepared uh, for weeks, had practiced and practiced, and it was an utter disaster. He forgot his sermon when he looked out on the crowd. He, he couldn't think of what he intended to say. He got words jumbled up, and finally, he just quit. He just walked out of the pulpit. Robert Moffat was sitting in the congregation, a well-known missionary, and he followed him out. And he said, look, God will make of you a great missionary. What you need to do is go to medical school. We need medical missionaries in Africa. And he did. And you can hardly talk about the history of Africa, certainly, certainly the history, the good history of missions in Africa without Livingstone's name coming up. 
It all went back to a blessing. And see, not only did that blessing give life to him, not only was it a cause of life for him, but the amazing thing is that one blessing from Robert, Robert Moffat meant that thousands of Africans would be blessed. And not only would they be blessed, they would be given life because of the work of that one man. Blessing is a leading cause of life. And what a gift it is to us. And blessing is something that happens all along the journey that we can make happen as we bless other people. And we never know where they are on their journey or where that blessing will ultimately lead and what sort of life it will create. Um, I, I love the story of a 16-year-old uh, pianist, a very gifted pianist in Budapest. And uh, he was having a struggle in his life. And a great teacher and pianist came to visit Budapest and wanted to, had heard about the young man and wanted to hear him play. And the teacher was uh, uh, Emil von Sauer. He was the last living student of Franz Liszt. He wanted to hear the young man play. And that 16-year-old pulled out all the stops I mean, he played the hardest uh, pieces of music that he knew, and he played them perfectly. And so moved was von Sauer that he went over and he kissed the young man on the forehead. And then he said this. He said, take care of this kiss. Because this kiss came from Beethoven. The first time that my teacher, Franz Liszt, heard me play. He kissed me on the forehead, and he said, take care of this kiss and pass it on because it comes from my teacher, Beethoven. Now, I don't know the end of the story in the sense that I don't know who the young man kissed somewhere down the line, how he chose to pass that on. But what he received that changed his life was the gift of blessing of that great teacher. And it, it was a cause of life for him. So we touch people all along the way, all along the journey in our blessing. Reggie McNeil has a couple of stories that I want to share with you. McNeil wrote uh, Missional Renaissance. It's a book that uh, some of the leaders of our church are studying right now. Uh, we went to hear him speak uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, there are two stories that he tells, and they're about blessing. Because one thing he emphasizes over and over again is it is our job as blessed people to bless people. It is our job to be a blessing for others. It's not complicated. And he emphasizes that, that it's not a matter of knowing the right theological formulas or any of that kind of thing. It is, it is simply being the blessing that God calls us to be. If we are to be God's people in the world, then we will bless others. Now, there are a couple of emails, or a few emails, that he has kept and collected. Because as he's gone around the country preaching and, and giving this message about blessing, people have begun to email him the stories of what that's like. Telling stories about, for example, when they're in a restaurant and, and they simply say to the wait staff person, uh, I'm about to pray, thanking God for the food. Is there something that I can pray for for you? Or they may ask, how can I ask God to bless your life? And, and the stories are remarkable as people uh, talk about sometimes the wait staff says, no, I'm fine, walks away, of course. But uh, but sometimes they will say, yes, there is something. And they'll talk about their life. And it's not a matter of somebody sitting there trying to read to them the four spiritual laws or to make them fit into some sort of formula and uh, I have it, you don't. Rather, it is a way that they can get to know God and begin that journey themselves. That gift of life 
through the power of blessing. Simple. So let me tell you about these emails. The first one is an email from a woman who, as a matter of fact, lives in, in Dallas and had heard him speak in Dallas and decided to give it a try, that she would bless people. She would listen for that still, small voice uh, on her journey uh, and, and, and try to follow it as God would lead her to bless someone. And so she was flying out the day after the seminar to Zurich. She arrived. It was raining cats and dogs. She got on a bus, uh, and uh, a man got on the next stop, and he was soaking wet, and he was trying to talk on a cell phone and juggle his belongings. And she said, that still small voice spoke to me and said, give him your umbrella. And she said, no, said, God, he doesn't want my umbrella. It's pink. It doesn't go with his outfit. Uh, and she said, it occurred to me that I was arguing with God on a bus in Zurich about the color of my umbrella. <laughs> so she said, okay. And she gave, she said to him, um, do you speak English? He said, some. She said, I want you to have my umbrella. He said, no, 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 I can't take your umbrella. She said, no, you, I want you to have it. No, he said, you keep it, I'm fine. And she said, you must take my umbrella. He said, Why? Now, she could have said, because I want you to have it or because it's raining, but she swallowed hard a couple of times and said, well, because God told me to give you my umbrella. Well, he didn't want to argue with her and God. <laughs> so he took the umbrella and he got off the bus and he walked uh, away into the rain and she assumed that would be the end of the story as far as she would be involved in it. That evening, she went, got back to the hotel. She was in the restaurant there, and a colleague who was also on this business trip came in, and she said, how was your day? And he said, you know, I had the strangest thing happen. This man walked into my meeting, and he was soaking wet, and he had this pink umbrella, and he said, um, he said the strangest thing happened to me. A woman on the bus insisted I take the umbrella, and when I asked her why, she said, God told her to give me that umbrella, and so I took it. Isn't that strange? Well, he said he, there was something about the way he told the story that he thought, you know, maybe there's something going on in his life. Maybe, maybe God's at work on him. And so when the meeting was over, he said that he went and he uh, asked, you know, how the, what was going on in the man's life and how he was doing. And the man started talking about his life and, and he ended up praying with him and, uh, and talking to him about becoming a follower of Jesus. And this colleague had no idea uh, about where that umbrella came from until she told him. You see, the point is, at a certain point in his journey, he needed a blessing, and she blessed him. And his journey continued, and someone else blessed him in a different way. And one thing led to another. And both blessings were a cause of life for him, you see? Blessing is a leading cause of life. Final, final story from Reggie McNeil. Three emails that he treasures. The first email comes to him from a man in, who lives in uh, downtown San Diego. Uh, heard him speak at a conference, and, and so he wrote him an email. went something like this. Dear Reggie, uh, I heard you speak yesterday at my church, and I've decided to give this blessing thing a try. And so I've decided that I'm going to bless the baristas at, uh, uh, at Starbucks. I go there once or twice a day, and uh, uh, so I'm going to bless them. I, he must have been wealthy, by the way, to go there twice a day. <laughs> but uh, anyway, he... Um, uh, he said, I'll let you know how it goes. And so a little while later, uh, email number two comes, and it says, Dear Reggie, um, the baristas at Starbucks think I'm crazy. <laughs> but they know me, and uh, so as I'm working at my table, uh, when they get a break, sometimes they come and sit down now, and they talk to me, and they tell me about their lives. Uh, and, and I tell them I will pray for them. Uh, and uh, so it's been a remarkable thing. And he said, so I told my small group about it, and they decided, you know what, we could do that. We could, uh, we could take care of all the Starbucks in a 19-block area. And so they sort of divided up, and they did that. 
Uh, and, and he said, um, so I'll let you know how it goes. Two weeks later, he gets the third email. And he says, uh, dear Reggie, this morning I was on my way to work and I went to a Starbucks that I don't normally go to. And I went in and I said um, uh, that I'd like uh, a cup of coffee. And when the uh, barista came toward the counter with the coffee, I said, and, and how can I uh, pray for you today? And he said that she pulled the cup back and said, uh, wait a minute, are you one of those blessing people? <laughs> and, uh, and that's our question, isn't it? Are you one of those blessing people? Are you? How can you go to be God's people in the world today and bless someone? I invite you to do that. Simple blessing, because blessing is a leading cause of life. Let's pray. Oh God, you have given us life and life abundant. And may we give what we have received, your blessing, as we bless others. In Jesus' name, amen. May these gifts, O oh God, be an avenue of blessing for the children in this church, the young people in this church, the members of this church, and all those whom we seek to help. 
And we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll find our hymn of invitation printed in your bulletin. As we sing it, we invite to the chancel you who would become members of our church family today. Well, I really hate to rush you out of the parking lot this morning, but you heard Mark Burroughs' announcement earlier. If you're parked over in the Justin Building parking lot across the street, they do need to clear that pretty quickly to set up for the Halloween Carnival for the children, which starts at 3 o'clock, and of course everyone is invited to be a part of that. Our gathering will soon be ended. Where will we go, and what will we do? May grace, peace, Hope, love, and joy forever accompany you. Amen.